Hey, what's up internet? Mold over here. Uh, I'm making a quick video here to show you how to take your guitar wing and modify it. Um, if you don't know, guitar wing is this cool uh, uh, controller that I designed with Livid Instruments that lets you uh, attach this control surface to any electric guitar or bass. Um, but it's got this big clamp, which is great if that's what you're doing with it. But what if you want to attach it to your acoustic guitar or your left arm or the wall of your workshop, who knows? It could be cool to take that clamp off. Um, and it's a little bit tricky because there's a battery in there that you need to keep, but you can do it fairly easily and successfully. And then you have this crazy, thin, light wireless controller that you could attach to whatever with a little bit of uh, double-sided tape or glue or Velcro or what have you. So it's a really cool modification. Uh, my homie, the Bishop game in LA, he uh, he asked me actually to, uh, to make a video like this for him. He's an amazing, uh, guitar controller player. So yeah, that's the inspiration. And without further ado, uh, I'm going to show you the tools uh, you would need to uh, to do this the way that I did it. Okay, so you're going to need, obviously, your uh, guitar wing. Uh, you'll need some of these super tiny, I think they call them jeweler screwdrivers or precision screwdrivers, because uh, you're going to have to pull out some really small screws. A tray like this is useful for keeping those screws from getting away. Um, we're going to be doing some cutting of uh, plastic and printed circuit boards. And I used to, I like to use a, a hand grinder like this made by Dremel uh, and this little tip. Actually, I like these better when they're worn down for the kind of precision work, work we're going to do. But, um, but that's a good tip for cutting through those materials. Um, if you're going to be grinding stuff like that, it's nice to wear eye protection. So stuff does not fly in your eyes and damage your vision and a mask so that you do not inhale um, uh, circuit board yeah stuff that you don't want in your lungs we're gonna be doing some wire stuff too so these are strippers auto strippers you can use manual strippers too but these are one of my favorite tools actually uh, cutters or you know other wire cutting stripping kinds of things are useful for that and uh, solder of course and a soldering iron to make that soldering happen that's a fume extractor I'm really happy to have that also helping keep my lungs a little safer when we're doing the soldering and last but not least, I just used some electrical tape to kind of like seal up um, the wound that I made in the back of my wing. So um, you could use another kind of tape, but electrical is kind of cool, especially since we're protecting electrical circuits and we want to insulate them. Yeah, so um, that's all the stuff you would need. And now I'm going to disassemble this wing and the modified wing and show you some of the details of those modifications. So this is... The, uh, the one that I had the clamp on it, there's three screws down here around the base. Um, if you've ever adjusted your wing, which by the way, that's what those ABC markings are, so you can like angle this thing, it's pretty cool. Um, you may have already taken those screws out, so those are easy to get out. Um, there's five more in here holding this compartment together, and this compartment uh, contains the battery. That's your battery, and I should point out that's uh, Pretty sure your uh, your lithium ion battery, the kind that um, does stuff like explode if you're not careful with it. So uh, be nice to it. Don't um, do anything I wouldn't do, or maybe don't do anything you wouldn't do. Um, but yeah, all that said, like unless you're breaking that open somehow or heating it up or short circuiting somewhere, uh, it's not a big deal. It's low voltage, so don't be don't be too scared. Um, also, I should mention, like, all this kind of stuff, of course, voids your warranty, and Livid's not going to service or, you know, do anything with your wing, or probably even, you know, answer your questions if you're like, I'm trying to modify the thing. Uh, so, yeah, um, so that's all pretty easy, um, and you can see there's a wire um, in the clamp, obviously, attaching the battery to uh, the main unit there. So you're going to pull all that out. I'm not going to do that, but um, you can easily figure that out. Um, and then you've got the battery loose. So this is um, the modified one that I've opened up. There's a whole lot of screws uh, keeping this enclosure um, shut. So it'll take you a little bit longer, um, but it's yeah, just screws, not too hard to find. Uh, the little push buttons will fall out. They're just kind of seated there um, and they need to be reseated when you close the thing back up. Um, so don't be freaked out by your buttons falling off. It's just the, the plastic caps for those buttons. Uh, and there's where I've received the battery and covered it with electrical tape. So let me show you 
what's going on there. I'll just pull up this electrical tape. So I basically just found a part of uh, the circuit board that was really flat already, didn't have taller components like these integrated circuits or these jacks and um, was just kind of out of the way. And um, I, I was I misspoke earlier. You don't actually have to grind the circuit board. It's just it's just glued on top of the circuit board. So uh, I think it already had some adhesive on it, but I may have slapped some more epoxy or something on there just to make it really secure. Um, and I shortened these wires, which I think you're gonna want to do too, because they're like a good like five or six inches long, I think. And that would be a whole lot of wire just to deal with in this tight enclosure if you don't want it. So there you can see my heat shrinking over the uh, the cut and reattached wires. And you can attach and detach the connection right there pretty easily, which is convenient. So you're not trying to solder like right next to your circuit board. You can just take that whole thing out, shorten the wires, and then get it in here. And this is where I recommend attaching your battery. And the one kind of tricky grinding thing you will have to do is modifying your enclosure because you can't get the enclosure back together without the battery uh, sticking through it. I use this electrical tape just kind of, you're just kind of trying to re-enclose, you know, this is a little bit of a of a hack. I think that's how I described it. So it's not your, you know, sweet professional modification. I'm just trying to get it done uh, for a specific gig. Um, but I think I did a pretty good job. So yeah, so you can see this is the grinding I did is I basically cut a little rectangle out to fit right where the battery is. And more or less the, the closer you get to the shape of that battery, I guess the cleaner, you know, that will look and, and the better it will be in the end. Cause you kind of do want, you don't want to totally ravage your enclosure. Um, but yeah, you can see more or less fits snugly in there and I should probably redo the taping job here but that's basically it and the thickness of the battery is about the same as the thickness of the back half of the enclosure so you really do get a surface that's totally flush uh, when it's done and if you wanted you could you know you could put more electrical tape on there you could put epoxy in there to seal it up super tight um, I just did it in a way that like I could kind of undo it or adjust it if I wanted at some point in the future. Um, but that's basically it. All right, about 10 minutes later, they are back together, good as new. Switch them on, get those attractive lights happening. Um, yeah, so I hope you found this video interesting, informative, helpful. Um, if you have any questions, don't ask me, ask the Bishop Game. And uh, if you wanna check out my music or other cool projects I do like this, other instruments and videos and things, um, I'm at moldover.com. And I want to make a special shout out to Jay Smith. Jay Smith is the former e CEO and one of the, the co-founders of Livid Instruments. And it was really him who made this project possible. He put a lot of resources and time and, uh, and faith in a uh, unconventional instrument. And um, I'm super grateful for him uh, for making that possible, this possible, and, uh, and other projects I've done too. Uh, he's a great guy, and he's living with ALS right now, which is also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. And it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty terrible disease um, that a lot of people get. And Jay formed a foundation called Every Ninety Minutes. Every Ninety Minutes dot org is a place you can go to find out more about it. And they are searching for a cure for this disease. So if you have the resources and uh, and you're inspired, um, I'd love for you to check out Every Ninety Minutes dot org and uh, and show your support too. So yeah, again, thanks for watching. Enjoy.